Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, someone asked me if I could do a video demonstrating the new masking that's found in Adobe Camera Raw. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. As you can see, I have Photoshop open. I'm going to go up to File and Open, and on my desktop, I have three different RAW files. We'll open up all three of those into Photoshop. Of course, when you open a RAW file up into Photoshop, it will open up directly into Adobe Camera Raw. Now, there's several different types of masks that can be used in Camera Raw. So I chose three different images, which will allow me to demonstrate several of these different types of masks. We're going to start out with this one. This is probably the simplest uh, type of image. Uh, as you can see, it's just sky and water, pretty much. I didn't do any processing to it at all. So we're going to use masking to process the entire image. Now to get to the mask, they're over here on the right. Click right here. You can see along the top, there's three basic types of masks that we could choose with these icons, subject, sky, and background. There's more below that, objects, brush, linear gradient, radiant gradient, and range. We'll go up here to sky. So I want to select the sky. And you can see that it selected the sky, but it missed part of the sky right here. And to tell you the truth, most of the time this works flawlessly. It will select the sky perfectly. But for some reason, with this image, it missed part of the sky. But the good thing about this sky mask is if it misses part, you could add to the mask. If it over-selected, let's say it selected the sky, but it also selected these trees in the background, you could subtract from the mask. Now in this case, I need to add to the mask. So we're going to go up here and click Add. We're going to use a brush to add to the mask. And we'll go over here to the brush attributes and uh, maybe put feathering, maybe a little round four. Flow at 100, density 100, we won't use auto mask. And you could change the size of the brush with the bracket keys. Right bracket key larger, left bracket key smaller. And I'm just going to go to the far left of the area where it missed. I'm going to place the brush just on the water and click once with the left mouse button. Then I'm going to go to the far right. And again, just place the brush just resting on top of the water. I'm going to hold the shift key in and click once with the mouse and you'll draw a dra uh, straight line when you do that. So now I have the entire sky uh, masked. Then I'm just going to adjust. I'm going to go to exposure, pull exposure down, add a little contrast. We'll scoot down here and we'll add some clarity. Let's see what dehaze does. Yeah, a little dehaze. And we'll add some texture. All right, so I did the adjustments I need to do to the sky. Well, what about the rest of the image? Well, you can see here there's no really easy mask. Like if I click at, not there, if I go up here to create new mask, actually, you can see that there's nothing there really to select everything but the sky. But we already did select the sky and we added to it. So we had the entire sky. Well, what I could do is I could duplicate this sky mask I just did, but invert it. And to do that, just go where it says mask one, click these three little dots, and then go down here to duplicate and invert mask. And you'll see when I do that, it selected everything but the sky. Now I could come here and do some adjustments here. Let's um, make it a little brighter, maybe add a little contrast. And we'll go down to clarity and add some clarity. Maybe go back up here and make it a little brighter. So you can see this is probably the the simplest type of mask you do, select the sky. And as I mentioned, most of the time it will select the sky perfectly and you can just start doing adjustments to the sky. In the case with this image, it didn't select all the sky, so I had to add to it. And just remember, you could also subtract to it. Just click the subtract button instead. And in this case, I had to add to it. So I was able to adjust the entire sky. Then to adjust everything but the sky, I just duplicated and inverted the mask by clicking on those three dots. Now let's go to another image. Let's go to this image with people in it. I want to do adjustments to each of the people in this image, but I want to do different adjustments, meaning if I'm going to soften skin, I want to soften the male, the guy's skin differently than I do the girl's skin. Now you may not have noticed, but when I clicked on it, it was thinking for a minute over here. It was actually finding the people in the image automatically. And it found person one, and it found person two. So let's click on person one, and you'll see then that we have the option to just edit the facial skin 
the body skin, the eyebrows. You can see as I hover over each of these different categories, uh, a red overlay appears on the image. The eye sclera, that's the white part of the eye, iris and pupil, lips, teeth, and hair. Well, let's go with face skin. We'll click that and we'll create this skin or this face skin mask. And here what we'll do is we'll jump down to clarity and we'll pull clarity down just a little bit and we'll pull texture down a little bit. So we'll just smooth the skin a little bit. Now I'm going to create a new mask. So we'll create new and we're going to go to people. We're going to select that same person. And this time we're going to whiten their teeth. So we'll go down and turn on teeth, create the mask for the teeth. And what we'll do here, as you can see, the red overlays on his teeth now. We'll make these a little brighter. And we'll go down to saturation and pull some of the color out of there. So they're nice and white now. Now let's go do the other person. Well, let's do his eyes. Let's do his eyes. Why not? Let's go to create mask. And we're going to select people again. And then we're going to create person one or select person one. And we're going to do his iris and pupil. And we'll create... We'll go to exposure and we'll make those a little brighter. You can see, see how it's just affecting his eyes. Make those a little brighter and it's that. Now let's go to the other person, create new mask, select people, select the second person. All right, and let's do the skin, the facial skin, create. And what we'll do is again, we'll go down to clarity and pull that down a little bit and texture down a touch. And let's create a new mask and select people. Go to the person again. And this time let's go to teeth. Click create. Make the teeth a little brighter. And pull a little color out of it by pulling saturation down. And finally, let's create one more mask. Select the people. Select person two. And this time we're going to go with the iris and pupil. Click create. And we'll make them a little brighter and maybe add some saturation to the eyes as well. So you can see how it's very easy to use these masks on people. And it gives you the option to edit a very specific part of the person, their eyes, their lips, their teeth, their eyebrows. I only, on each of them, I only did their facial skin, their teeth, and their um, irises. Um, but I could have done eyebrows, hair, lips, and so on as well. So, uh, pretty cool. Very easy to use. Now, let's wrap it up. Let's go to another one. Now, the other images, I didn't do any editing at all. I just did masking on them. This one, I did do some editing on it. And I specifically made pretty much everything kind of dark. But the bird, so the bird stands out. But I need to make the bird stand out a little more. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to masks. And we're going to select the subject. And you can see that it selected the subject perfectly. Now we'll go to exposure, maybe make that bird a little brighter, but then we'll add some contrast. And then we'll come down here and we'll, well, it's a white bird, but we'll add some saturation so the beak gets a little whiter, or it gets a little more colorful, I should say. Add some texture, add some clarity. So you could see it's super easy to use these masks, all different types of masks we could use. Now, this is just kind of a taste to give you, a, you know, an idea what you could do with the masking that's found in Camera Raw. And um, hopefully this will get you started. And in future videos, I'll go into some of those other masks. Now, I purposely didn't use like the linear gradient or the radial gradient because those have been in Camera Raw for a long time. So... I didn't think it was necessary to do those again. But there's other things you could do with masks. You could intersect masks and do different things with inverting a mask, different ways to invert a mask. So I'll cover that in future videos. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.